Well, hello, my name is Chauncey Oman, national presenter with Faith Life, makers of Logos Bible Software. I'd like to welcome you to Women in the Word, which is that new exciting series I told you guys was coming. And we have a very special guest today, Christy Anabwile. Um, and, and when uh, I think the Lord gave me this, and one of the first names that came to mind was, okay, you got to have Christy up there. And so contacted Christy, and she was more than happy to uh, join us in this. And so, Christy, welcome. Welcome to one of the first ones that we've done. Yay! Thank you so much. It's always a joy to get to hang out with you, Chauncey. You know, I'm a big, a big fan of um, Logos and um, a big fan of the series. I was really excited when you first told me about it. So thank you for inviting me. Good, good. I'm glad, I'm glad you accepted. And, you yeah. know, we're going to get into a lot of different things and, you know, talk about your book, talk about maybe some things that you do at the church. But first, you know, people always know those things, right? But we want to go a little bit deeper and maybe ask a question about something that maybe people may not know, all right? So it's a, a segment that I'll be doing up here called First, uh, first or Favorites, all right? So I'll ask you either something that's a favorite of yours or something that's a first. And so as I was looking at the questions, I think I want to go with how about your favorite junk food? I was hoping you would ask me a question about <laughs> that because it's one that I love to talk about. Um, my favorite junk food is a Snickers bar. Anybody who knows me well knows that Snickers is just, we have a love, love relationship. Really? My absolute favorite. Uh, it's my favorite candy bar, but honestly, like, I wouldn't say it's the best quality chocolate. <laughs> I've been eating Snickers so long. It's just kind of my go-to junk food. So really? I do love it. But for better quality and similar vibe, I also like Trader Joe's um, milk chocolate hazelnut chocolate bar. When I tell you it's going to change your chocolate eating life, it will change your chocolate eating life. So really? Trader Joe's milk chocolate hazelnut bar. Oh. Well, so, 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 so there you have it. So when it's what yeah. birthday time, it's yeah. holiday time, it's anniversary time, Mr. DBT, um, <laughs> Hey, you know what? No excuses now. So they we know, already know. They already know. <laughs> they so, already so, know. So are you, well supplied. <laughs> are you just the old school Snickers or, you know, they have the new one kind of like peanut butter in it and some other, you, you're old school, you're the OG Snickers. Oh, OG Snickers, OG all the way. Yeah. Yeah, wow. even I do like the Snickers ice cream bar too. That's that's pretty that's pretty good. But yeah, old school straight up Snickers. See, yep. see, there you go. So I, I hope we would have something that your followers and your fans, you know, would <laughs> not know, and and now they know. All right, so yeah, see, now they know. Old school Snickers. <laughs> no excuses, people. Right. <laughs> Well, good. Well, that's good to know. I love Snickers, too. Um, my roommate from college uh, yeah. always likes telling this story about how I would get up at two or three in the morning, sit on the side of the bed, get my Snicker bar out with a Pepsi. So there's no, to me, there's nothing better than a cold, soft drink and a Snicker. So I'm right there with yeah. you on that. I mean, yes, exactly. And funny enough, when I was in college, that's when I first kind of you know, really, really fell in love with the Snickers bar. Like every day between classes, walking across the brickyard, you know, there was like the student store and I would, I mean, I couldn't pass it up. I would stop by the student store, grab me a stick at Snickers, eat it on the way to class. It's just, it was a part of my daily diet. Wow. And speaking of college, where did you go when you, where you ate all these Snickers at? Oh yeah. I, I um, went to North Carolina State University where I like depleted their supply of Snickers over the course of my years there. No, <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, I went to NC State University. I um, started out at NC State as an engineering school. So I started out in the engineering program and I realized really quickly that I do not like math, nor am I very good at it. So my second year, I switched <laughs> and became a humanities major and so I majored in history and African American studies. Yeah, really, North Carolina State. See, I didn't, I didn't know that. So ACC, yeah. uh, ACC. yes, ACC, yeah. all so the way. Yeah. Rivalry. So I went to Virginia Tech. So ACC, mm -hmm. the same division. So now, when we play North Carolina State, 
and you get a random text from me giving you a hard time, you you know where that comes from. So yeah, yeah. Well, me and Tabiti will be more. I mean, we you know trash talking about ACC is kind of one of our <laughs> love languages. So oh wow, okay. So you all in trouble. I'm just tell you now, yeah. you're in trouble. You you you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Good. no Carolina blue is allowed in our home. Let's just, I just have to say that. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm right there with you. So we can't yeah. agree on that. Outside yeah. of that, okay, yeah. all right. Okay. <laughs> We're good, good, good. So mm-hmm. let's get into, if we could, kind of uh, mm-hmm. some ministry things. Uh, we want to talk about, um, you know, again, some stuff in your life and talk about the book and, and all of that and get into, you know, how you studied the Bible, you know, kind of what's your normal routine and how you help other people, you know, in your ministry. But um, before we get to that, let's, if you could, talk about, um, like, how you came to faith. You know, did you grow up in a, a Christian home and it kind of came from that? Or, you know, there was there some kind of college experience? Did you come kicking and screaming to the Lord? Or how did that happen? Yes, so... Um, thank you for asking. It's always just a joy to remember, right? Mm-hmm. And to remember where the Lord has brought us from. And, uh, you know, the old folks say, uh, Lord, you brought me from a mighty long way. So <laughs> I'm sure that, that's a lot of people's testimony. But mm-hmm. I grew up in a home where my grandmother was uh, my brother and sister um, and my parents, mom and dad, and then my grandmother. We all lived in the same home. And my grandmother, I only knew her as an elderly woman. She died when she was almost 104. Mm. And so she was really the Christian influence in the home for most of my you know, younger years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because there were so many of us living in the house, <laughs> I slept, I shared a room with my grandma and I slept with her um, in the same bed for like my early uh, elementary going into middle school years. Mm-hmm. So she had an old king's, maybe a queen size, or it felt king to me because I was little, but <laughs> a big old feather bed, you know, with like the coil springs and the feather pillow, feather mattress, mm-hmm. and like the feathers would like pop out and, you know, prick you sometimes. Yeah. So she, <laughs> she, yeah, yeah, she was like that. And she was my first Christian influence, taught me about prayer, taught me about just the spiritual discipline of being in God's word. If she was not in church, if she was not t- doing some kind of errand in the home, you can find her in her free time reading the Bible or reading the newspaper. Those were the two things that you would always find my grandma doing. Um, her name was Nicey. So everybody called her Miss Nicey or Grandma Nicey. And uh, and so, yeah, she kind of, the Lord used her to kind of just plant those early seeds. And just to make a long story short, um, I grew up in church, went to church every Sunday, part of Sunbeam Choir, Youth Choir, mm. <laughs> went to all the um, district meetings and things like that in our denomination for the, the ones for youth, mm-hmm. and went to college and just, I went to church like at campus ministry a couple times, a local church a couple times, wasn't really vibing with it and mm-hmm. was, I don't know, just questioning a lot of things that a lot of college students do. Um, but for me, my first, I had only grown up understanding the Christian faith. And so going to college, even though a little bit in high school, you learn about Islam and um, Buddhism and different faith, uh, you know, different faiths, I hadn't really kind of studied it for myself, for myself. And so I started taking religion classes and really learning a lot about various religions. And my grandma would always say, all that learning is going to make you crazy. <laughs> that was kind of her phrase. And that's basically what happened to me in my early years in college. All that learning about all these different religions just kind of made me crazy in the sense of I just was very confused and I didn't know what was true. And mm-hmm. so I kind of had a very syncretist view of religion and faith, meaning pull a little bit from here, pull a little bit from there, mm-hmm. kind of make your own religion type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would tell people uh, that I am uh, spiritual, not religious. So don't tie me to a specific religion, but I'm a spiritual person. So I believe in kind of uh, overarching spiritual truths, mm-hmm. like like love, like um, doing what's right, you know, kind of those moral things. Mm-hmm. And um, that was kind of my college years. Fast forward, the media and I get married. Um, and we get married the summer before our senior year of college. So we get married after college. Um, 
a few years in, we get pregnant for the first time and we miscarry that baby. Mm -hmm. And um, mind you, up until that time, my mindset was I can do anything I want to do. I can be anything I want to be. If I work hard, if I, mm -hmm. you know, try my best that I can do anything. Like the world is open to me. And so um, obviously it's young married couple having this new baby. Um, that was all like in the plan until mm -hmm. we miscarried. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, wait, what happened to, I can do what I, I, my life is in my hands. I'm mm -hmm. in control of my destiny. I could do whatever I want to do, be whatever I want to be. Like this wasn't in my plan. It's not something I wanted. And so I need to figure out why did, how, and why did this happen? And if I'm not in control, then who is in control? And so that really kind of started my journey of faith, trying to figure out, is there a God if there is, you know, what is his role in my life? And so fast forward, the BD and I um, happened upon a television preacher who was preaching the uh, gospel. We got interested in it, started watching his show regularly, and then uh, found out that he lived in Washington, D.C., where my sister lived at the time. So we visited his church. He opened up Exodus 32 and preached the gospel from the Golden Calf incident, law and gospel right there from the text. And, and the Lord used it to bring both myself and uh, my husband to faith. And so that, that's how our journey with the Lord. And then from there, because we both accepted Christ basically at the same time, we were able to grow together as new believers and just really dig into the word uh, as a family and grow in that way. So wow. that's my story. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that because yes, that that's... I think, you know, with this whole Women in a Word series, it's those types of stories that, you know, I just wanted other women to, and men too, hopefully we have a lot of men who will watch as well, but just stories of encouragement, you know, people may be feeling like, well, you know, I, I know what I hear, but I don't believe or you know and god can as you know he can use any and everything to to bring you to him and, and for you to know the specific passage that that pastor preached uh in exodus um it's that, yeah. that's pretty amazing and the title of the sermon it was called what does it take to make you angry and mm. the focus of it you know like that golden fast incident he talked about like god's anger over sin and um and God's uh, righteousness and justice and um, how um, he's judged and how we need to be reconciled to him and, um, and, and that we need to be concerned about our own sin and you know, um, our need for repentance and faith and trusting in Christ. And so, yeah, I remember that sermon very well. What does it take to make you angry? And just the conviction over um, me being coming to a realization of my own sin and actually wanting to do something about it. And what I did was place my faith in Jesus for the forgiveness of my sin. That's powerful. Man, thank you again. Thank you for sharing that. And for ladies who, who are listening, and again, I would love for them to, you know, soak all of these types of stories in as this, you know, this series goes on. Um, and, and talking about women now, you mentioned that when we first talked about this series, you were pretty excited about it. Um, you know, what, what kind of makes you excited about a platform like this, you know, this Women in the Word series? And, you know, what would you personally like to see come about as a result of people seeing people such as yourself on these types of webinars? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, a platform like this really is helpful because in, in the Lord's kindness, I just... There's, I don't even know what the word is, maybe some sort of revival, maybe some sort of awakening where people are, the church is beginning to really see and embrace the value of women and um, supporting women in the work of the ministry. And I think just really beginning to follow the example that we see um, with Paul and, and other um, um, other um, epistles in, in the epistles where um, he really commends a lot uh, women who are fellow workers in the ministry and Jesus his own example of mm -hmm. holding up women and, and supporting them and so that's exciting to see and so I hope that part of this series would be used in that way to uh, introduce 
the church, not just women, but introduce men and women to women who are um, doing the work of the ministry, who are teaching God's word uh, faithfully, uh, who have things to say maybe in a unique way that um, maybe possibly wouldn't be said or heard um, from a male perspective, but also that it doesn't even have to be that way. <laughs> like we don't always have to look to women to kind of provide something unique. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's great and I support it and I want to see it more. But I think also just straight up faithful biblical teaching is a value in and of itself. So I'm excited about that, excited about what the Lord is already doing. And um, yeah, I would just like to see more of it, introducing the church to women who are faithful in various areas of word-based ministry, whether it is teaching the Bible, whether it is writing, whether it is as um, uh, a lecturer or professor on a seminary campus, or um, whether it's someone who has a specific ministry for engaging people with the Bible, a historian, um, so I just think there's so many women out there who are doing great work around word ministry uh, that I would love to introduce, see more women introduced in that way through this platform. Well, that's great. And that's why you're here. Uh, you're talking about re, uh, writing books and, and teaching the Bible. And again, when I thought about this, uh, you were one of the first ones I, I thought about. And uh, you're just thinking about your books that you've written and um, the impact that those books are going to have on, you know, whoever reads. So can you take a second to talk about, uh, of course, we want to talk about the latest one, yes. but um, maybe your previous book, maybe talking about that and some other works that you've done, and then we'll transition into the new book that just came yeah. out in March of 2022. Yeah, so thank you. The first book I had the privilege of editing, actually, is called His Testimonies, My Heritage, Women of Color on the Word of God. So kind of just as we were talking about before, part of what uh, the Lord used to bring the idea for his testimonies about was people were coming to me, asking me, um, who are some Bible teachers that I should follow? Who should I listen to? Who can I learn from? Um, who are some of the women that you uh, learn from in the word? And this is from white and black, mm -hmm. men, women, like all kinds of people we're kind of asking this question that I want to learn from a diversity of women and do you have a list? So I started making a list. <laughs> and uh, as I started making that list, another question at the time that people were asking was like, um, you know, I'm looking for a Bible study to do with a group of ladies for next year or this summer or whatever, or do you have any, can you recommend any devotionals or Bible studies that are by women of color? Mm -hmm. And at the time, it wasn't even that long ago, but at the time, there weren't a lot of resources out there. Trillia's book, Bible studies weren't out yet. Um, you know, our sister Elizabeth Woodson, she has some stuff coming out now. Um, you know, there's some, you know, there were some, I'm not saying that it didn't exist, mm -hmm. but there weren't really a whole lot of resources uh, to point people to, and particularly not a lot of devotional material either. Mm -hmm. So those two questions just kind of came together for me. And I just felt like the Lord gave me a list of women. And then he gave me the idea to, I was uh, studying through Psalm 119 anyway, which is all about the word of God. And I was walking with it through some sisters, with some sisters from church, walking through it. And it was just like, this makes sense. Why not use Psalm 119, which is all about the word of God. Mm -hmm. And also have um, um, introduced these women of color through the through this chapter of Psalm 119. And so that's what we did. We took each of the stanzas, 22 stanzas in Psalm 19, assigned them to one of the 20 some women in the group. And we all wrote uh, expositional devotionals on Psalm 119. So uh, that it, it ended up being maybe close to 25 women because we also included some poetry as well because the Psalms are poetry. Uh -huh. And I just thought it would be important to include some poetry about poetry in uh, the volume so that's what we did it was such a joy so much fun our group is still pretty close we support each other in a lot of ways and it was just a joy to introduce folks to these bible teachers and also 
whet their appetites more for the word of God through Psalm 119. Well, and that's exciting. And, you know, quick plug for Logos. You can get that book. Just go to logos.com and purchase that book. And that becomes a part of your Logos library. And, you know, we're going to we're gonna talk a lot about Logos here in a few minutes. And I'm going to turn it over to Christy, let her kind of showcase, you know, what, you know, how and, you know, what she uses Logos for. Um, and if you could, Christy, talk about um, the new book. The new book that just came out in March of 2022, this year, maybe, who is that book for? You know, how'd you come up with the idea? Maybe what the process was like. So tell me about the new book. Yeah, so the new book is called Literarily, uh, Literarily, not literally, <laughs> Literarily, um, How Understanding Bible Genres Transforms Bible Study. And so this book came about, um, I, I don't know, just the Lord uses so many different threads to bring things together for me. And so one of the big things that the Lord used was as I had, you know, over the years, I've been to a lot of Bible teacher training kinds of events because mm-hmm. uh, I want to grow as a Bible teacher and I want to learn myself and know how to bring this material into my local church and disciple the women in my local church. But I was finding that as I was going to these workshops that they would use terminology that I never heard before. I'm like, a pericope? Did you, were you trying to say periscope? I'm like, were you trying to say periscope? And they're like, no, 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 pericope. And I'm like, I don't, what is that? You know, or they would use a term or they would talk about genres. And I'm like, genres, like, what is that? Like, I know they're in the Bible, but not really having a clear idea, or they would talk about some theological term. Um, and I just, there were just things that even as a Bible teacher, uh, terminology and they would kind of assume a base of knowledge, both for the teacher and also for the people that we're teaching and discipling in our local church. And so I just found it difficult. I'm like, well, I can't, I can't like directly and you know export (laughs) this material and I can't like directly import it into my local church because there are pieces missing that I would have to fill in and so in my church I started kind of a foundations class for the women in my small group and we just went through let's just pretend we've never heard of the bible before we don't know what it is we're some from like another planet or something and we need to help someone understand what the bible is and what it's for and so we kind of did this foundations class and a part of that foundations class was talking about the biblical genres how the book how the bible itself is laid out and why that makes a difference in how we study the bible and so that was kind of really like the initial seabed for literarily but more directly moving forward um, as i was myself using um, some of the techniques, I don't want to call it techniques, as I was using some of the, um, just the ideas and processes that are in literarily, I was using them in my local church with women. Uh, one of the ladies, we were going through Ruth and Esther with, I was going through Ruth with one lady, Esther with another, and one of them, and so we were, Ruth and Esther are both narratives, they're stories, they're historical narratives, and so they follow a pretty straightforward plot arc, meaning the storyline is fairly straightforward in most of the chapters of both of those books, the overarching storyline and also within the chapters. And so I was teaching them things about uh, how you follow a plot arc, how you consider the setting and what's the presenting conflict in a passage. And how does that come to a climax in the story? And then how is that presenting problem resolved? And mm-hmm. how does the climax of the story impact um, how, how it was resolved? And what does that teach us about God and his activity in the world and how we, you know, how we respond uh, to him? And so we were going through that and she said, man, this is so good. We were having a great time. It was mm-hmm. just so much fun looking at scriptures in that way. And she said, this is great. She's like, have you ever thought about writing a book to teach other people how to study the Bible this way? And I was like, you know, that's actually a great idea. Uh, Because I was thinking about, well, surely there's tons of books out there like this, you know, so uh, there's, there's no need for a book of this sort. 
But as I thought about it and prayed about it, I it just dawned on me that there's not a lot of material out there like this. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the material that currently exists that uh, speaks to literary genres in scripture is really either written for kind of seminary level mm -hmm. or again, it assumes a base of knowledge from the reader. And, and I just like, it's, it's, it's too much of a jump for me to start right here. So we need to back it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what I try to do with Literarily is to present an overview of biblical genres in a way that's relatable to the average person reading their Bible who's not seminary trained and who may not have some of the categories already that I kind of, you know, highlight in the book. Or maybe they have, like when you're reading poetry uh, or when you're studying grammar in middle school, you remember words like simile and metaphor, but you don't know what they are anymore, like, you know, and have never really thought about those in the context of reading the Bible. And so I try to, even when I use terminology, I try to make sure I explained it in a, you know, straightforward manner, illustrate it, and then give people opportunity to practice at the end of each chapter. Uh, so that's the story of literary. It is an overview of biblical genres, and it takes you through, um, you know, all the eight major genres of scripture, mm -hmm. and then provides uh, uh, kind of literary elements within those genres, and then how we use them in Bible study, and how understanding that really does transform how we read. It helps us to read the Bible properly, helps us to interpret properly, so we're not reading a proverb as if it's a promise or reading a parable as if it's historical fact or reading Jesus's miracles as if it was a parable, you know, or, um, and so, uh, so yeah, so that was, that was my goal attempt history of literarily. Wow. That, that's exciting. And, and uh, just so you know, I have it in my logos library. Um, oh, yay. <laughs> and haven't, haven't started reading it yet, but uh, now that you've explained that I'm ready to dive into it. Um, and, and so you've talked about uh, how you came to faith. You've talked about, um, you know, you, you and your husband and, you know, how you guys you know, came to faith and um, the platform of giving women a voice and, and, and talking about books. And now I want to get into uh, what does and how does Christy study? You know, what tools do you use? Obviously, this whole series is powered by Logos Bible software. And, and just coincidentally, you use Logos. I know that that wasn't a requirement for anyone who's going to be a Women in a Word. But I will tell you that uh, most, if not all of the, the ladies who are going to be participating, they're like, oh, we love Logos. I'm like, oh, man, that wasn't even a thing. And yeah. um, I know you're a big Logos user. So if you can, um, maybe show us and talk to us about you know, how you study, um, what's a kind of a normal routine and maybe some of the things that you're working on right now and how you use Logos. Um, Cause there's a lot of ladies out there who may not have Logos right now and may not have even heard of it before, but the way you've broken that down for this book, um, I'm, I'm assuming Logos was a part of that, but uh, yeah. So you mind sharing that with us, how you, how you use Logos and how you study? Yes, yes, um, yes. So how I study kind of depends on what, like if I'm just studying for myself, I may or may not use logos actually. So uh, sometimes if I'm just studying for myself and I'm reading through scripture, um, I may just, you know, like have my Bible and a journal and a pen and that's it. And I do that a lot of mornings. I read passages in scripture, I meditate on them and I journal uh, what I'm learning. If I come across something that sparks a question, I may pop on Logos and like, oh, let me go check this out and see if I can chase this down a little bit. Um, however, sometimes when I'm studying, now the other thing is I use Logos literally every day and it's always up on my laptop, always. Uh, and so I do use it every day, uh, particularly if I'm discipling someone, if I'm preparing to teach something, I used it every day that I was working on literarily. Uh, and I can show you uh, some of what I did with that. But when I'm using Logos, I pretty much uh, open it up. There's a home page, And can I just show? Yeah, please do. Screen? Yeah, do that? I yeah. want to see. I'm excited to see yeah. it. Sure. Let's see. There you go. Can you see my 
logo open? Yep. Okay. Uh, so <clears throat> let me go back. So when you start logos, it kind of opens up to this page. It's kind of like a dashboard homepage mm -hmm. type thing. And you see, I have my literally, I, got, I call this a note card. I don't know what you actually call it in logos, but I call it a note card. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's just a holder card. for, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a holder for things that I'm working on. Uh, you get a sneak peek into the new Bible study that I'm working on. Don't tell anybody, y'all. You get oh, first wow. dibs on that one. <laughs> but this one, um, uh, whoops, I don't know what I just did. But this one is um, for, I don't know what I just did. Let me go back. Oh, I, know what I, I clicked on it. Uh, but this is for literarily. So I can show you what I kind of how I use literarily. Let me just click on it again. Okay. And I feel like we're getting like a be behind the scenes look of how this book this was is written. A <laughs> this is, it is a behind the scenes look at how this book was written. Let's see. No, it's not opening for me again. Oh, there we go. I'm in a shared workspace. So the internet is a little bit slower. That's okay. So when I was working on literarily, um, this layout is a Bible and commentary layout. So if you look on logos, they have kind of these quick start layouts. And this is the one I generally start with, Bible okay. and commentary. Okay. And so that's basically what this is. Here's my ESB Bible. Here's my CSB Bible. And then behind it, I have reference materials. So I have a complete handbook of literary terms. I have um, this kind of um, library introductions to books of the Bible. I have this um, Baker Encyclopedia of the Bible. And then this is probably, yeah, a Bible. And this is like some Bible dictionary. So behind my Bibles, I have kind of reference materials, dictionaries, um, yeah, dictionaries, most of dictionaries, mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, kind of general things like that. And what you don't see is commentaries, right? Mm -hmm. So I will use commentaries, but I generally, when I'm starting something new, I kind of have dictionaries and those kinds of things to help me chase down words and phrases and terms, and then I pull in my um, commentaries on this side. So okay. what you'll notice for literarily is that a lot of this material was written by the same person, Dr. Mm. Leland Riken. He is like the master of all things related to literature and the Bible. So the Handbook of Literary Forms, Leland Riken. The um, Introductions to Books of the Bible, Leland Riken. If you go over here, he has these smaller little uh, volumes that focus on you know, specific genres of the Bible. So when I talk about genre, I'm talking about categories that the Bible kind of is laid out in. So the first five books are the law books, Genesis to Deuteronomy. And then you have the historical narratives, starting with Joshua and Judges, and it goes all the way down to uh, uh, Esther. Yeah, it goes down to Esther. And then you have um, the wisdom books like um, Ecclesiastes and uh, Proverbs. You have the poetry books like Psalms. You have the prophets, major prophets and minor prophets that go from um, Isaiah all the way to uh, Malachi. And then you have the New Testament gospels um, that's Mark Luke, and John. And then after that, you have, and I'm going to throw Acts in there. And then you have um, the epistles. And then after that, you have uh, Revelation, which is apocalyptic, but we also have Revel uh, apocalyptic literature in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel and scattered throughout in other places in scripture as well. So mm -hmm. I say all that to say, when you look at these shorter volumes by Dr. Riken, they focus on a specific literary genre. So this one is on the gospels. This one is on wisdom literature. This one is on, uh, this one is on, oh, this is a different author, but it's on wisdom literature as well. And this one is on apocalyptic and prophecy. So um, these are all up as kind of like commentary. So if I'm studying a passage, I also, if you notice, 
there's like the letter A on these two. And uh, so if I have a specific commentary open, like, let me just open one. Let me move the screen down. Yeah, so if I open, well, I just open the ESV literary, no, that's the study Bible or the new Bible commentary. I can open that and this has a little A beside it. So I can go to these three dots and click another letter A. And so now when I'm in a certain passage like John 135, if I click over to my commentary, it follows me. So it's also on John 135. Nice, so it syncs so them all together. <clears throat> Seeks it all together, exactly. And you can do B, so you see I have B on these. So I can have another, uh, like if I'm looking for a word and I want to find that word in other uh, sources, then it'll follow me and find it for me. So that's really helpful. And yeah, that's kind of like where I start if I'm studying something specific. And I'll show you one more yes. that I'm working on. This one, let's see, yeah, I'll go back to, this is cool too, what I'm scrolling through is a snapshot. So I can go back to something that I was studying earlier. Mm -hmm. And if I remember it, yeah, I can go back uh -huh. to it and it'll, it'll pull it up for me. So nice. today I was, uh, I meet with a lady, uh, one, a woman from my church um, bi-weekly. She's mm -hmm. teaching through the book of Mark. And so I just kind of give her, counsel and you know just advise her or listen to her actually as she's telling me about what she's planning to teach through the book of mark so today she's getting ready to teach um, chapter six through eight and so i just pulled up the book of mark and i have my new bible commentary and that's a whole bible commentary and then i have a couple specific to mark mm -hmm. and you know when she's talking about something and she asks a question if we have a question about something that neither one of us can really answer, then the commentary is right here. And I can say, ah, oh, you know, you know, what does this mean? Or where's this coming from? And just kind of use it like that. Um, and, I see lots of other and I see okay. all of these are, are on A's as well. So as you scroll through the yes, Bible. they're all on A's. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, everything is on the same. That's nice. I like that. Exactly. So as I scroll through, it's following, my commentaries are following along. Um, and then I'll show you one other quick thing yeah. that I do. Uh, another thing, if you'll notice along the top here, uh, there are all these tiny little books that are across here. So let's say I'm studying Mark, which we were doing today. I have my ESV and Bible, NIV and CSV Bible, but all the rest of these are kind of reference materials. So this is where I would pull it. I have certain whole Bible commentaries and whole Bible dictionaries and whole Bible, um, uh, uh, yeah, dictionaries and things like that, that are just mm -hmm. basic reference. This is a commentary, I got one. This is an evangelical dictionary of biblical theology. Now, this is really cool. We don't have time to talk about this today, but <laughs> this is kind of a new thing that I pulled up in my regular reference material that I'm really, really enjoying that's helping me to think through biblical theological things as I'm studying various passages of scripture. Um, so these I just kind of keep up here all the time. So when I need to grab a dictionary, I can just, I, when I say grab it, basically I just mean tap on it. So I can just tap on it and it adds it right here. And then if I want it to follow me, I can put an A there. And I guess if I come across something that's similar, it will, um, but this is a dictionary, so I'm not, like I said, I just pulled this in. I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure uh, how that works, but yeah, I just pull it in like that. Wow. So quick question. So you, you've shown a lot of different resources that you use, and I haven't looked up your account because I don't remember which which version of Logos you have, whether or not it's silver, gold, diamond, or, but for the resources yeah, that you have, did they come included in your package or do you kind of add um, individual um, resources on, from Logos.com? Oh no, I add stuff all the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I did have, um, you know, it came with a package of stuff that was great. I mean, I, I mean, the resources there's like thousands and thousands of resources on the logos uh, package. Mm -hmm. But um, if there's something that's not in the package that I currently own, I can always go and purchase it. 
And so, for example, if I'm looking for my book, uh, his testimonies, I can search for it up here. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see me typing in there? I can. Mm -hmm. so I can type in his testimonies, my heritage, hit go, and eventually something will come up. Yep, you're in the mercy of the internet, so. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> oh, nope, that's pulling up a stack book. I don't want that. That is cool, though. Here's testimonies, my heritage. I think I should just give it a minute to load. Yeah. So search for his testimonies, my heritage. I can do that. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's telling me about things that I currently have in my library. And right. huh, what do you know? What do you know? I don't actually have his testimonies on heritage in my library. We're gonna work on that. <laughs> I know. I was trying to show where. Yeah, was that I maybe can... in the library? Maybe if you go up to the. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I need to hit yeah. this. You see this blue book. That's why I couldn't find it. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Yep. So go up here to his testimonies, my heritage, and now you see that it's saying some kind of error happened. Yeah, know. it's in there. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So his testimony is here. And if you go over here to store, uh, when I click on it, hopefully it should pop up. There is a result right here. Mm -hmm. Christy under relay author and eventually it'll come up. But yeah, yeah. you see that it's right there. Mm -hmm. And when it does eventually come up, you can it'll say ask you if you want to buy it. And then you can just tap on it and say, yes, I want to buy it. And you can add it to your library. And so, it. Yeah. Use that little library tab and then type in the resource that you're looking for and it should come up. Yeah. Good. I'm going to stop share and refresh my screen. This okay. But yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah. is, I mean, there's so many things that you can do uh, from this package. And like I said, I use it every day, not just the Bible and commentary, but you can choose what kind of layout that you want. So if you just want to journal, you can journal on mm -hmm. your logos package. If you want to take notes, if you want to create um, slides for something that you're teaching, that you're teaching, mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of things that you can do um, from there. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, again, that was not a requirement for ladies to be a part of Women in the Word. <laughs> it. It, it, it just happened. And because um, my thought was, hey, I'll, you know, I'll show some, you know, tips and tricks from Logos. And it's like, no, what? no, let's, let's let Christy you know, she uses it every day. And that's one of the things we want to do is be able to show, you know, people how, you know, the, the different guests uh, study the Bible, different methods, different tools that they use. And you gave some great insights as to, you know, how people can do it. And so you also, so here's a commercial moment coming in. And I was going to um, say, that's just, yeah. and I was going to say, that's, to me, that's just kind of an introduction. They're like, so many things that you can do with logos that I'm learning every day. But mm -hmm. if someone decides to, if you decide to get a logos package, just know that it's way more there than you're gonna be able to grasp right away. But mm -hmm. what I just showed you was something simple that you can use pretty much every day. If you just go into that little layout, Bible and commentary, it'll pull it up and you can use it right then. There's tons of other things that it can do. You can pull up timelines. I also usually keep a timeline. Um, I kind of pop out the window for timeline mm -hmm. and I keep that on my uh, screen as well. So when I'm studying something, I can see where I am in um, in history, not just like biblical history, but in the world. It even tells you like current events, things that were happening at that time in the world. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can you can pull that in too. So no, that's good. And so I want to uh, take a second just to show people who may be interested in it. They're like, hey, you know, if Christy uses logos, maybe I may want to you know may want to use it too. Um, and so what we've worked out is uh, a special discount for uh, those who are uh, friends and fans of Christy, you can go to um, logos.com slash Christy. And I'm gonna put that on the screen for anyone who may want to take a picture of this. And you're gonna get a 15% discount. You just go to logos.com slash Christy and there's gonna be a coupon code there. It's Christy0322. And you'll see all of the different options of um, the Logos packages that, you, that uh, are available. 
So again, logos.com slash Christy. And just to help people out with that, because you'll see, you know, several different options, right? So we have, though, for those who are maybe just starting out in Bible study, there's a, a version called the bronze. Then we have one for silver. Um, once you get silver, you get all of the features that Logos has to offer. And so that's for someone who's maybe not in ministry, they're not doing a lot of preaching and teaching. They may not even necessarily be an author. You can use it if you're one of those things, uh, but that's what silver would be. And then you have gold. Gold. gold is for someone who's in any type of ministry. And that's what, you know, most of your associate ministers use, your Sunday school teachers, authors such as um, Christy, and there's other ones as well. So I want to, you know, make this into a big logos commercial, but I did want to make sure that everyone knows that you can also uh, have the same tools that Christy uses to uh, write her books. And, and, and I appreciate the inside, that, that backstage view that you gave us as to how that, that book was put together and the new one that we yeah. you, sworn, you sworn us a secrecy so we won't tell anyone what's yeah. coming. So we yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, I was also going to say, and I promise you Chauncey did not um, ask you to say this, but I will say like, if you are, a teacher of the word, you should definitely consider getting at least the gold package and don't get frustrated. There's going to be so many things you, you don't, I mean, there, you, you're getting commentary series and lots of material, but you're always going to come across stuff that you don't have. So just be careful, like at some point, you know, not spending so much money on getting individual things. At some point you may want to just upgrade to the next thing and just I think on Logos on the website, it can show you what all is included in your next upgrade. So if you're looking for a specific commentary series, don't buy, the, I mean, I won't say don't. You may want to consider rather than just buying that commentary series, what would be the differential in just upgrading to the next package? Because the next package will not just give you that series, it'll give you, you know, 100,000 more resources to add to your library. So I hope that makes sense. but. That's something too that I had to, um, you know, figure out is like at a point, um, it's wasting money to just buy individual books when I could yeah. just upgrade and get like a whole extra library worth of stuff. So. Yeah, and, and I'll just add to you mentioned you telling me you know, don't get you know um, kind of overwhelmed because it has so much to it. I've been using Logos for probably eleven years now. And I learn a new feature or something new about logos every week. I promise. And I even work for the company now. And so there's so there's just so much to it. And for those who have it or who are thinking about getting it, you're probably thinking, man, there's a lot to it. Well, I'm going to start doing uh, logos tutorials about twice a month. And um, if you're on Instagram, you can, uh, I just created a new Instagram page. You can follow me at Chauncey Logos. And I don't have anything up there right now, but a picture. But what's coming is going to be some dates where you can tune into Zoom and we'll do like an hour long uh, Logos tutorial. So I would just encourage you to, you know, go to logos.com slash Christy and purchase it today. And then follow me on that Instagram page, get on one of the tutorials, um, no, no matter how advanced or uh, new you are, don't, don't worry about it. I've done tutorials where I have to say, okay, double click on the logos icon to open it up you know so we have to we go as basic as we need to do to be and as 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 detailed as we need to be so chrissy yeah. hey thank you Wait, yeah, yeah, please. I yes, yes. Yes. no I, well you have to i want to say this too is that when you um when you do the, the tutorials are good you definitely 100 percent should absolutely do the tutorials that trump is going to do but on the logos app their tutorials too so if yep. you're trying to figure out how to if you're trying to figure out how do i create slides or how do i prepare a sermon using logos mm -hmm. you can type that in to help and there's actual videos that will walk you through how to do it so i learned a lot that way too just following the videos okay i'm done no, no, that's okay that's okay. that's why i love this because people who use logos they they get so oh we i should say we get so excited about it because you, you see how much time you saved and uh how much in depth or how much more in depth you can go with a particular topic um but hey enough about that if, if people want to get in contact with you uh what's the best way to do it? instagram twitter facebook what's the best way for people to get in contact with you yeah, I spend the most time on Instagram. You'll probably okay. find me there most of the time, but I'm on all the socials, uh, probably Twitter the least. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Instagram, and you can also um, go to my website if uh, you just want to follow what I'm up to lately. And that's my first name, last name, 
christianyulule.com, christianyulule.com. So. Hey, Chrissy, thank you so much. Uh, I, I knew I was fun. talking to the right person when we started. I knew it. I knew it. And you just proved uh, it. You, know, you just proved it and have exceeded yeah. everything I was hoping for. Uh, thank you. And so we're going to make this uh, recording available so people can, you know, watch it at another time and forward it to other people. And um, and want everyone to go out and get Chrissy's book, too, because uh, I'm excited hearing about what's thank in it. You. So please go out and thank get it. Thank you so much. So Chrissy, thank you. I know you're traveling today. She basically yeah. pulled over in a truck stop, basically, to uh, <laughs> to do this. Not, not quite that bad, but she did pull over. She's traveling. So thank you yes. for taking time out of your day to- um, No problem. My pleasure. Work. So thank you so yeah, much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. All and right. we'll see you on the next yeah. uh, Women in Work. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye. Awesome. Bye.